the seed of an idea. How does an idea develop? Okay, I, it comes, comes from within and from your emotions. I came here today and I honestly thought I would be painting the seeds, the plants that they had sown in their garden and they have all these beautiful vegetable plants now. But the longer I stood out there, I saw the landscape, the hills, trees and that's where my idea came from the landscape of the hills and the trees i'm going to start by showing you a painting i actually worked on yesterday in progress so you can see how it develops the first thing i did i was down at um, fox river preserve in illinois and i you can see the wildflowers the purple wildflowers I made a quick sketch. This is my sketchbook, and you can look through it. It's labeled on front where the sketches all come from, and I sketched that there. That's the first thing I do. So I make a sketch, and that's what I was doing out there when you came in, because I was making a sketch to do. This is not necessarily the sketch I'll be working for, but it's to get me into the subject matter, into the idea, to become part of it and it becomes part of me. Because when, as an artist, when you start working, what's going around you is someplace else. Your interest in it's you and what your paintings become one. So this was my first sketch yesterday. Then from there, this is the picture of what I was drawing. Printer didn't print it quite as nice. <laughs> but, and then, when I, after I had drawn that sketch, I decided since I have a rectangular instead of a square canvas, I was going to zero in on the pathway, the flowers, and there is a building back there, but I don't really care about it. If it was, or if it did, or if it didn't didn't matter. So this was the photograph of what I was going to be basically doing. This is my first onto the, onto the canvas. Purple flowers, the road twisting in there. <coughs> this was supposed to be the building just the idea of that line of the building. It was hard to remember to stop yesterday to take pictures. <laughs> I didn't like where I had positioned things. So I actually, my, I was lucky, my paint was still wet. I work with acrylics. Acrylics dry quickly. So many times if I want to change something, I have to go and really change the whole color. Sometimes I'll go back and even start with a white and go right over it with a white to get rid of the color I put there. But because my paints were wet, because I'm using open acrylics when I work outside, and open acrylics stay wet. They stay open. And I just took my paper towel, rubbed it out, moved it around, put it where I wanted it to be because I had actually forgotten that there had to be some space for the plant part of the flowers. <laughs> so I had to get rid of that and move it around. This was the next step. You can see a lot more is going on here. It was very dark. Very dark in here. And that was right next to the purple flowers. So I wanted to get that dark in because that dark positions everything and places things. So that's why I had that real dark one in there. Real quickly, get the dark in there, get it there, so get it right up against those flowers. So those flowers are gonna pop out to you and you'll see them. You can see I've ignored that there's a building there. It's still, there's a swash of you know, the color that there would be something there. Um, 
This tree, there was a tree back in there that appeared very red. So I put the brown, reddish color in there so that I know, remind myself that that's there. There were also some red flowers back there that I wanted that spot of red there. So I'm just adding some paint, adding a layer of paint, putting more things in, more colors, more shapes too. Some more changes. You can see suddenly a tree grew up back in there. A little bit of the house, there were some big pillars which had attracted me to the building to begin with, so I had those big pillars pushed in there. But you can see it's just slowly starting to develop. Someone was walking down the path, so I actually, in, in case I decide I want someone in the path. <laughs> the sky in. I don't like to work with a large white area leaving it there. Get it in. Get some color in there. Many times I'll even put any color in. Brown, blue, green, orange, purple, any color. Just because you want something in there. You don't want to have that constant white. What you're looking at when you're putting a color in there, what is the value? What is it? How light, how dark is that? In fact, there's times when I'll take and all I'll use is light and dark, light and dark, light and dark to start. Many times that's the way I'll work. But, so I put some of the white in for the, the sky in, just so I want some blue, I want some movement. I want it there. I didn't want it to be, you know, back and forth sky like that. I wanted it to have more movement. Threw a white spot in there because when I was looking down, oh, there's a white patch of flowers. <laughs> put a white patch in. You know? <laughs> Not trying to say, oh, there's a white patch of flowers. I'll put them in. No, it's just there's a white patch of flowers down there. So I'll put it in there. It's gone now. <laughs> but a little bit of it remains, just enough to get the feeling that there was something white there. See, I've changed the colors within the flowers, within the purple flowers. And just slowly pushing it forward. Getting some bright colors up in here, just pushing and pull. You push, you pull. Push, you pull, and push, you pull. That's what you're constantly doing with the painting as you're working it. And this is what I came home with yesterday. You can see this. A little bit of a building back there, but not really. It was really the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really beautiful building. It was, it was really nice. Um, is it finished? No, not quite. What I will do now, I'll take it home. I'll put it upside down, <laughs> sideways. And what I like to do, if I feel something's pretty close to being finished, I'll put it upside down at the bottom of my stairs. So when I come up and get up in the morning and start to, oh yeah, because if something isn't working, it will jump out at you when it's upside down. Because you're not recording it as what you're seeing. You're not recording it as halfway and everything else like that. You're just recording it when you first look at it upside down. It's hitting you as shapes, colors, values. And so that's why the stuff you don't jump out. So I have to work on it a little bit yet. It, I don't know where I'm going to take it. You know, I can't say what I'm going to do with it. Yet. All you have to do is think. Use your imagination. That's <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. Um, this is my booklet. If you're, I've got several sketchbooks. I've got a lot, some work out there, some sketchbooks out there. You can look through. Uh, my sketchbooks are basically sketches which work for different things. I One of them doesn't have any labels on the front. It's all pencil. This one is all pen and ink and watercolor. And it's sketches from last year and this year. Actually this year, just this year. 
It's not on my head, but it's old tears. But you see, I just, where, where have I been doing something? This I take with me in the car because when I went into Milwaukee and I had to wait for my car to be serviced, just sat down on the street and do what I saw on the streets there. What is that made out of those pages? Uh, it's a special paper out of candy papers. I found it when I was in France oh. in an art supply store in France. Oh. And I've had, had I found it in one other place and I was able to get one there, but I've had to order it from the company. And so nice, it's a nice little size. Yeah. That's what I liked about it. It's small as well. Yeah. But you can still fit your pictures in there. Yeah. yeah. It's just a perfect traveling size, which is what I like about it. So this is examples of how a picture grows. I can't do this off because this is the value when I talk about light and dark. If you were to print it in black and white, those are your lights and darks. <clears throat> There's like no color. Right, no it's color. It's blue. But if you add colors, that's it right. looks more happy. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's where you go. This is just a fun sketchbook which I've been playing with. Oh. <laughs> it's all different things, all different places. It's the um oh, I have got them out there, you can see what kind of it is. Actually, it looks like a couple houses yep, or trees. Yeah, there's a couple houses in there. It looks like old trees yep. as well. Yeah, I, this one was drawn, that, that's up at Lynn Park in the near yeah. Big School. This is actually up north in Hayward. Um, I forget where some of these are. <laughs> but, you know, I take it with me when I feel like it, I see something I can add to it. I'll just add it to it. That's what it comes up. Painting that zero. So I started with my sketch and now I'll go out and I'll start painting. And you saw what I'm going to do. I'm going to be doing the landscape, not the plants. So you're welcome to watch me. You're welcome to look at that. Any questions I should ask? When you're on vacation with the other book, do you use watercolor or colored pencils? Uh, this one here? Yeah. Oh, that one? Yeah. Uh, it's the pen and ink and then the watercolor. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I found that the company which I get my pen and inks from it makes two types. One is waterproof and one isn't. Oh, okay. So you, one time I was, oh, wow, okay. I've got the wrong one here. <laughs> yes? Do we get to do art with you? Oh, I had a plan on that. <laughs> yes. Do you always make sketches before your final painting? I like to sketch at least one sketch before. And sometimes I'll sketch on my palette, per se, but I don't, on the palette, I'm sketching with paint. Okay, that was very interesting. I just thought artists started painting. I didn't realize you went all of this work before. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of, um, quite a few watercolor artists will draw their painting out very carefully before they even start putting color in it. Yeah. But I don't, I, I go with the color. But that's part of your composition. Right, you're deciding your composition and everything like that. So you're trying to decide where are you going and then you're doing more. People who work on photographs tend to also draw it out before they paint it. I don't work from photographs very often. Yes. How long have you been painting? Too long. <laughs> <laughs> I've been painting from their age. <laughs> so you always liked it. Yeah. Yes, I always have. Any more Six, questions? Six, eight, and nine. Nine. Eight. <laughs> um, any other questions? How long did you work on that yesterday? Yesterday I was there, I got there probably around 9.30ish and I got home around 4. So, that time. So. 
I work quickly. I work quickly. But well, it's out in nature, and the light keeps changing, and the weather changes, and yeah. you'd have to be quicker than if you did something stationary inside. Now, it's called plain air. It refers to it as plain air, plain air, out in the air, and everything else. And you have actually only about an hour and a half when you have to decide that's where the shadows are going to go. That's where that's going to be. You can you continue painting, but you have to have that idea of where those shadows are going to be. If you remember Monet's haystacks, and they said he painted like. He'd be painting that his daughter would take one away and give him another canvas because every hour the shadows would change. And in order to capture the shape changing shadows, you have to change your painting. And if you, that's, if you see his haystacks all in one room, you can see the time of day as it's going. <laughs> and because that's, that's the biggest problem with plain air painting. Sometimes I'll have two pages on one thing. It depends how fast you're going to be going back, if you're going to go back or not. And you know, it's, it's quick painting. In plain air competitions, you bring your empty canvas, they stamp your empty canvas, and you might have two hours to finish your painting. And then, and not only do you have to have it finished, you have to have it framed. <laughs> Which I haven't figured out why. <laughs> do you mix and delete the acrylics similar to watercolor? Um, yes and no. When I'm doing my first sketch and I'll be using water. But no, I usually don't. I usually use them just as they are. And I'll tell you, I have a different palette with me. I'm using, when I'm saying a palette, I'm talking about the colors I'm using. I'm using what would be referred to as a faux palette. Many times when I go and paint, I'm using two yellows, two reds, two blues, and white. Right now, I think I have four yellows. I have, <laughs> I have a large variety of colors. And I, because I'm outside and I'm painting, and I, I put my paints out yesterday because I knew I was painting again today, I have them in a small palette. Normally I put my palettes a bit like this, but it's easier to travel with a smaller one, and it's um, just the, I can cover it up and I need it stay. My normal palette is I use freezer paper, I put it on a piece of cardboard, take it to a piece of cardboard, I put my paints out, when it's done for the day, it's gone. And the next piece of freezer paper. Because I like a palette that's this size. You have more space to mix your colors, and you more dry. Sybil, do you do mostly nature, or do you do other types of painting? I do mostly nature. I do um, some surrealism, which is imaginative. Mm -hmm. I didn't bring any of those. I've been working quite a bit with surrealism. Uh, the juxtaposition of several different objects in a painting. Uh, one of them which I did was um, I had some fruits, some apples, and pecan things. And then I put there, uh, there's some bolts in the same painting, and the apples are in the bolts, but not in the bolts, and things like that. And so I've been playing with surrealism, too. Yes. If you look in books and they have pictures, you can just go like this and write all the pictures. You can make your own practice. Own. You can practice. Good question. What, what's the difference between using just the primary colors based, you know, as I mix opposed everything. to the palette? I mix, have to mix everything. There's, there so wouldn't be any... What community. makes you decide to use one or the other? Oh, I just wanted some different <coughs> things. That's all. I thought, because I'm working with my open acrylics and I happen to have them, I thought, oh, yeah, I'll use those, <laughs> you know, just put them in. But the next time I do out, I might not, you know, just... Does it take more time to get the color you want if you're just using the primary? No. 
because I mix up my canvas also. And it's, I just, that's why I like a large palette because I do a lot of mixing. And you'd be surprised how many different greens you can get from three blues and three yellows or two blues. That's, that's what I was wondering. Oh, you can just get such a variety, such a variety. But I happen to have a real dark, dark green that's in a tube. It has some black in it. And I don't keep that black on my palette, so I want it that. So I put it in. And I also put some earth colors in, some browns. And let's see what else do I have? I think that's basically it. But I have more reds and more yellows and more blues than I normally have. Normally, you just do a warm and a cold. What's considered a warm blue and what's considered a cold. Warm blues will tend to be towards the reddish side. Cool blues will tend to be towards the green, dark side. Yes? Are you self-taught or did you study? I was an art teacher. I had oh, really? Okay. And I trained under Martha Hayden. Oh, yeah, I know her. Mm -hmm. yeah, we've been to her house in that studio. She's a plain air painter. We're going to have some Mandola then. Yes. yes, you do. Yes. In fact, the play, they're going to, the library just sponsored a plein air at the Arboretum this Saturday. Mm -hmm. Their last one got rained out. I was going to go to it, but I didn't feel like battling the rain. <laughs> I battled the rain. Mm -hmm. I painted in the rain. And the water, I turned around and <laughs> the pain is not even, there's nothing there, absolutely nothing, because it gets all washed off from the rain. Yeah, so it's... You maybe have an umbrella? Yes, you should. <laughs> you know. Or a little tent. Little, little tent. Little tent. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> Someone brought me an umbrella, they wanted to hold it over, by, over me, so I wouldn't give it. I said, no, I won't do it over my painting. I don't care about me, I'll, I'll get wet about the painting. Right, right, yeah. yeah. It has different effects, you know. You do, you live with it. <coughs> but I didn't feel like getting out. There's going to be one at the library too on, in August. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll go out and start painting. <laughs>